Bring it on, baby. So, Rob, so I'm going to interview you. I am so <laughs> excited to be here. <laughs> Freaking excited. I have been waiting for this interview <laughs> for so long, and now it's finally going to happen. I mean, why haven't I been on the show before? I have to really disappoint you. It's not my questions. You had Roger Federer. <laughs> You had Alan DeGeneres. Generous. DeGeneres. I know, I know, I know. And I was waiting and waiting, but Brad I'm here. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Yeah, why was Brad Pitt before me? <sighs> choices, choices, choices. I get it, I get it. So who did he cancel for today just to have me on the show? Guess. George Clooney. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what, with, <laughs> with no further ado, <coughs> throw them in. These are the questions from the Vietnam people. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. Okay. So what would you say are the key differences between barbering and hairdressing? I would say that one of the um, things for me, and I want to point something out very clearly. I love both. and. I am um, trained in both, so I, I think I, I, I actually think I have the right to, to tell about both because they are so important to me. But if you want to have the biggest difference, I think hairdressing is an art form and I think barbering is craftsmanship. And for me the difference is within art you create something out of nothing while with craftsmanship, you try to perfect a certain product. A carpenter will always make tables, but the tables get better and better and better. They get more beautiful, he gets more known to his tools, uh, and, and through experience, the trade grows. So for me, that is the biggest difference. I'm in charge now, so I can cut him off on answers as well. I love this. But I'm not going to do that yet. So, okay, I think that we have both need to think about this one because this is, what is the wildest thing that we ever done? <laughs> um, we cannot say that on camera. It might, it can and might will used, uh, be used against us in a court of law. We have done some really wild shit. I mean, before, um, We've been friends for so long and um, we had some really bad habits that drove us to do really crazy and wild shit. However, um, mm, which one are you thinking of? Oh, I not even going to go there. Okay. I'm not even going to go there. I remember you dancing while puking. I, uh, <laughs> there is a lot of great stories, but, um, the wildest thing that we've done. You know what I thought was really, it's not wild, wild, but we went to Chile. And um, see, we just own a barbershop. Just like everybody here in the room, it was nothing special. Well, it's always been super special to us. But even when you would travel to Rotterdam and you would see Scorum, you'd be like, oh, oh, it's just a barbershop like at home. And I think that is the power of the shop. We, the fact that we're in Vietnam, we can hardly believe that just something that we love so much brought us all the way here. Oh, I have to look at you instead of the camera? Okay. Yeah, I would interview her. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> but the questions come from them, right? Okay, so, and then, <laughs> so at one point we went to Chile and then we were picked up with a limousine with oh, two, with two, Har Chile, yeah. with two Harley drivers behind us and we were just like, the fuck, this is so crazy. Then we were brought to a helicopter and the helicopter took us to some wine, wine tasting. <clears throat> and we were in the helicopter flying over Santiago. And we were just like, we could not believe what, what was happening at that point through haircuts. And when we landed in Chile, we were brought to a room. We didn't have to pass customs. That was very special. That too. was the Guns N' Roses room. Yeah, <laughs> that's where if bands flew in, that's where they would wait. So it might be not very wild, but I mean, there's been wild stories, but, but, but that, was, that was insane. 
Th that was insane. We could not believe that was happening. Well, for me, not also not the wildest thing, but the strangest thing that ever happened. I told this yesterday also. When we were in Taiwan and we went to the massage parlor. I don't want to be part of this story. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be part of this. We, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to hide behind the couch. <laughs> we all had a massage, like six guys, but all the, the, um, the girls that were performing the massage spoke English, except for my masseuse. It's such a so horrible story. all of a sudden <laughs> she was trying with hands and feet, with hands and feet. She was trying to communicate with me. <laughs> and I, I was probably the only one out of everybody that did not want a happy ending. Oh my but God. She was trying to communicate with me and she was like, do you? <laughs> and I'm like starting to sweat. I'm like, oh no, why do I have this? Why is she not in another room? Blah, blah, blah. And so do you? And I'm like, oh, I, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> but what did she mean? Are you a singer of a band? <laughs> but come on, if you have a massage and some a girl does this to do, do you? <laughs> that I'm was the weirdest thing ever that happened I, to I, me. I well, think. the weirdest thing that happened to me was <laughs> oh, here we go. I, went, I was in Australia, <laughs> and, I, and, and Yella and me ended up in a strip bar. And the next morning, I was very hungover, and I had a phone number in my pocket. <laughs> So I was like, oh, <laughs> so I called the phone number <laughs> and, and the guy picks up. <laughs> Hello, this Hello. is Ryan. <laughs> Hello, this is Chris. <laughs> like, what? I asked him to be a model in the strip bar. But <laughs> the first guy to pick up a guy in a female strip oh bar. Oh my God, I'm the only one in the world. <laughs> okay, next question, because this is going to take forever. <laughs> I know. Okay, so... Can you share a little bit of the barbering skills that you often apply to your clients? Um, I think the, your special technique. Yeah, you know what? We've been doing hair for, uh, for so long. I think Lane started when he was 14. I started doing haircuts when I was 14. Um, I think our, our barber skills uh, have gotten so much better because we also know about longer hair, women's hair. We are very all round. Um, if you look at the shop, there is still a lot of fading and skin fading going on. Not my personal. Uh, uh, Not both of us. No, if you look at the haircuts right there on the wall, like slightly longer sides and then with short. That is my favorite haircut, like your classic pompadours. But honestly, lately I've been doing a lot of uh, texturized haircuts again, uh, slightly longer hair. So I think what we're trying to do with Scorum and the old school um, is we're, we are kind of trying to build a bridge between classic hairdressing and classic barbering. So at the moment, even with the, the teaching, we try to be as all round as possible. So, you know, long hair, short hair. But if you look at some of the people working in our shop, they're fading. Man, they're so good at it. They're so insanely good at it. I'm going to be very honest. I, I can do a nice fade, but I cannot do it like, uh, like Jason anymore, man. That's true. It's insane. They've gotten so good. All the barbering around the world, by the way. Is there a career accomplishment you are most proud of? Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple. There's a couple that I'm really proud of. And it's a little corny. Um, this so must be corny. Yeah, this it's, is it's supposed to be corny. It's, it's kind of corny. So I got three that pop into my mind. Um, one is the name Schorum. Uh, the name of our barbershop is Can a really... Can you zoom in a little bit? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so Schorum is like a really bad word, right? <laughs> and... Um, when we called our shop Schorum, there were a lot of people that told us nobody is going to go to a shop with a name that bad. Um, because it, it means, you know, scum, scumbags. It means horrible people. And, um, but now, when you look uh -huh. in the uh -huh. Dutch dictionary and you look up Schorum, it says 
horrible people, criminals, outcasts. And under it says Schorum, a popular barbershop in Rotterdam. So that is a that huge, is really cool. that is a really big accomplishment. Yeah. So I like that. The other one that I'm really proud of is that um, we came up with a name for a haircut, Scumbag Boogie. So that's one side short, uh, side part. And we put that on the poster. Um, and you know, Fidel Sassoon came up with some names for haircuts like Firefly, uh, The Wedge. And we grew up with that. And um, when we named that haircut Scumbag Boogie, it was not something serious. It was just something that we put on the poster. But then we sold about 20,000 posters and we used the hashtag uh, Scumbag uh, the Boogie. And now when you go on Instagram or whatever, there's like 200,000 hits on Scumbag Boogie. So we, we named the haircut. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... We named some other haircuts that didn't do so well. The scumpadour is <laughs> the squiff. <laughs> squiff. That's what popped right. <laughs> the squiff. <laughs> However, um, <laughs> the squiff. <laughs> We're not going to talk about the squiff ever again. <laughs> I'll um, have a picture for it <laughs> that you can add it in with uh, the squiff. <laughs> um, and one thing that I'm particularly proud of myself. Uh, and it's corny. I know it's corny. But when I was younger, I always wanted to have, I wanted to be a professional skateboarder, right? I mean, some people want to be a police agent or a fireman. I wanted to be a professional skateboarder. And being a professional skateboarder means that you got your own pro board. Well, I never, I never made it to being a professional skateboarder, but I got my own scissors. Mitsutani made pink bloody butcher scissors. And they were the fastest selling scissors they ever had in their collection and i'm pretty i'm pretty proud of that honestly i get that so we're not busy with Rusel, scorum the old school the zwijnestal how do you like sp to spend your free time lego <laughs> <laughs> done legos <laughs> i really love legos and i love reading and I really love running, riding my bicycle, uh, having my son over, playing with Legos or playing Legend of Zelda. And um, I'm actually, I'm kind of a child in a grown man's body, I guess. I, I really... I think every man is yeah, like that. Yeah, I just like to, I just like, I just like my toys. I really like hanging with Lane here. <laughs> <laughs> No? I really like <laughs> He's so funky. We should both hang. Uh, so yeah, stuff like that. Okay. What's your first memory of cutting hair? Oh man, um, back when I was younger, like 13, 14, um, all I wanted to do in my life was uh, smoke weed and ride my skateboard, right? And um, I remember that we used to, to have the, there was this one rich kid in the village and his parents would buy him skateboard videos. They were really hard to get by back then because we were in the Netherlands and they had to come from America. And I remember that one night we are watching a skateboard video and one of my friends goes like, hey man, I wanna have a mohawk. Well, we, we were probably smoking weed, so it probably went like, hey, man, I want to get Mohawk, man. And my dad had a pair of clippers. So I was like, fuck yeah, let's do a Mohawk. And um, so I, I took his hair and um, I did a Mohawk. No sectioning, no combing, just like, oh, yeah. Now, for all the barbers, a Mohawk is not a very easy haircut. Because when you put the clippers, you go like, you know, you always go. Yeah. So I started with the mohawk and then I felt it was going in. I was like, oh shit. So then the mohawk was like, like, like this. <laughs> and then when we put it up, it was a little like this. But that was my very, very first haircut. And I loved it. I loved it so right much. Away. Huh? You loved it right away. Right away, because it's not easy. Even a mohawk is not easy. So after 35 years almost of doing hair, I don't find it 
I, well, you know what? I still find it hard sometimes. I, it's never, it's never, it's, it hasn't gotten easy. You still have to think, you still have to focus. And um, yeah, mistake is easily made. Yeah, and I'm, I never lost interest. I still, I still love doing haircuts as much as when we started. Listen, bring it I up. have the most stupid question ever because we have gotten this question before. I'm going to ask it anyway, because <laughs> I think it's... Why would anybody want to know this? But here we go. Now, if you were left on a deserted island to practice barbering, with only two minutes to get your tools, what would you choose and why? So, on a deserted <laughs> island, there are no clients on a deserted island. I would bring a Playboy. Me too. <laughs> a deserted <laughs> island, guys. And, pra and still practice. I st I'll definitely practice. <laughs> <laughs> practice fading. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Horrible interview. Oh, oh my God! You cannot. Man. You cannot. You cannot use this interview. I think this is a good question. I live to slap it. Yo. <laughs> Yo, are you sleeping? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> no problem. You're not you're not listening to our answer. It's boring, right? <laughs> oh yes it is. So where and why did where and why did the name Rusel come from? Okay. That is a really good question. So do you want the truth? Or do you want me to lie? I want the truth. <laughs> okay. I was there. You were there. <laughs> okay. Here's the truth. Um, short version. When we came up with the name Schorum, um, we were very happy because we have been looking for a name for what? About a year. Yeah. And we were it was thinking. Horrible. Yeah, it was, it was really hard because the name of your shop is so important. So important. So we were thinking English and we were thinking American, but we're Dutch. So that didn't make any sense. Nope. So on the night that we came up with Schorum, and it's a, it's a really strong name in Dutch. It's really, we never expected our shop to be known over the borders of the Netherlands. But in the Netherlands, Schorum is a very, very strong name for a shop. But it's also funny. And I think humor in a barbershop is one of the most important powers that you can have. If you can entertain your clients, Agree. It's even more important than the haircut. But um, on the night that we came up with the name Schorum, we thought it was super funny, but we also thought it was really strong. So we partied. We partied hard because we had to celebrate. So we got really drunk. And on the same night, we said, if we're ever going to make a product, we're going to call it Ruzel. Because Ruzel is, first of all, the fat of the belly of the pig. So we thought that would be super funny because if people would say, hey, man, what do you got in your hair, man? Yeah, I got a bruiser, man. You know, that would be funny. But um, in Rotterdam, where we are from, uh, our town is known to, um, how do you say this? Our language is very direct. I, it's, it's a lot of other people in the Netherlands are kind of shocked by how direct we are yes and, and we got all these weird expressions that are kind of naughty maybe and one of them is when it's really hot outside you say i got rusel running down my crack so um like like lard going through my through my asshole, butt, <laughs> asshole through my butt cheeks it's a horrible expression but it's also super funny and people in Rotterdam laugh about it. They're like, oh, yeah, it's that hot, right? So uh, that name stuck. And then when uh, Scorum became a success, well, everybody said nobody's going to go with a, to a shop with that name. We thought like, well, if they go to a shop called Schorum, maybe they're going to put Ruzel in their hair too. And that's how Ruzel was born. And it, and it worked out. But again, you know, uh, it's funny in the Netherlands, but it's also a very strong name because it's Ruzel. Uh, we say Reuzel. The Germans say Reuzel. Reuzel. Uh, the Americans say uh, Ruzel or Reusel. So it's a name people can pronounce. And what was very smart was the pig. Now, 
the world has changed a little bit. But when we came out with the pig and, you know, the product is vegetarian, it's just funny. But, uh, well, you know, it was, it was so good because so many products looked, all the products looked exactly the same back then, you know, all the big brands. And then all of a sudden we had that little battered can with a pig and guys, every guy in the world, if there's something weird or funny or they go like, what's this? And if a guy does this, what's this? The product is sold. You have to be really stupid not to sell a product that a guy picks up and goes like, what? Right? Because at that point you go like, oh, you know what that is. And then you tell the story and that's how you sell the product. So uh, smart move. Absolutely. Um, let me see what I'm going to ask next. Who is the favorite artist of all time? Fidel Sassoon. Fidel Sassoon. For me too. I'm going to say it one more time. Fidel, Fidel Sassoon. I'm Sassoon. Sassoon. Fidel Sassoon. Fidel Sassoon. <laughs> Fidel Sassoon. Fidel Sassoon. <laughs> I think that's uh, clear, right? Fidel Sassoon. Who? Sassoon. Fidel. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like to travel to new places? Yes. That was your answer. <laughs> wow. I always love go. I've never been to Vietnam. Um, I was super excited to get here. Honestly, we're only here for two days, which sucks uh, because I really wanted to see more. I took a run around the lake this morning, which was absolutely fantastic. Little dangerous too with the, with the traffic, all the motorcycles and shit. Um, but um, yeah, man, um, I definitely want to explore as much of the world as possible. And it's insane that, that, you know, doing what we love brought us around the world. So which cities would you definitely want to visit again? Again, uh, Tokyo. I would definitely want to go back to Tokyo. I would want to go back to Austin. <laughs> because I know a very pretty lady in Austin. Um, I, I really like Taiwan. Um, I, want to go, I want to go back to Hanoi. And I want to go to Ho Chi Minh. <laughs> so bring us back. Bring us back. I, I, um, what else? What else? I think that is enough. Sydney. No, Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah, you really, really like Melbourne. I really like Melbourne. And um, yeah, Berlin. Really like Berlin. Berlin. I really like Berlin. That's actually really close to Rotterdam. And you know which city I always love to visit? Always. Rotterdam. You live I, there. You don't visit that. I, I, it feels like I'm visiting it every day. <laughs> it feels new every day. I, lo I love my hometown. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> okay, well, this was the end of you. No. This was the end of you. Really? Yes. Moet ik het nou ook bij jou doen? Nee. Do I have to interview him too? That's going to be very short answers. Yeah. Yes. No. No. Yes. <laughs> it's actually super yes. funny. No. <laughs> it's super funny. So, Lane, what would you say are the key differences between barbering and hairdressing? There are no differences. <laughs> what is the wildest thing you guys have ever done? Already told that. What is your daily inspiration? What drives and motivates you in the trade of barbering? You didn't ask me this. No, I didn't have to ask all the questions. Oh. Okay. Can you share a bit about the barbering skills that no. you often... <laughs> <laughs> is there a career a <laughs> accomplishment you are most proud of? <laughs> Say me. 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 No. <laughs> Say you. <laughs> you? No, me. No, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We're not busy with Ruzel's quorum, the old blah, 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 blah. How do you like to spend your free time? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you guys call yourself scumbag barbers? I don't call myself scumbag barber. Me neither. What is your first memory? That, act, other people do that. What is your first <laughs> memory of cutting hair? <laughs> um, 
I don't really have a memory for a memory <laughs> of it. What do you think will be the new Speed it up. What do you think will be the new trend in barbering in the upcoming years? There are no trends. I know, it's only style. Now, if you were left on a desert island. <laughs> I would take a woman. <laughs> then you're not deserted anymore. I get it. Where did your interest within the men's care world first came from? <laughs> <laughs> Lube. <laughs> Is there a better way of referring to Russo products than men's care? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, as an educator, what level do you want your student to reach before stepping out of the title apprentice? The highest. <laughs> Um, do you like to travel to new places? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was the interview. There you go. <laughs> That's how we roll. Thanks, guys. Was it good? Yeah. Okay. You probably have to cut out a lot of shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, fuck. It's even hot in here. Oh.